if m and n are irrational numbers, where m is not equal to n, then mn, so the product, is also irrational. Disprove this statement by means of a counterexample. So counterexample means we find a scenario where this statement is not true, and that's disproving it. So what is the statement saying? First of all, if m and n are irrational numbers, so let's first talk about what an irrational number is. A rational number is one which can be expressed as a simplified fraction of integers. So for instance, regular integers like 5 or 3 or 25 or whatever, all of these things can be expressed as a simplified fraction of integers, and therefore they are rational. Another example of a rational number would be something like 1 over 3. An irrational number is one which can't be expressed in that form, and an example or a few examples of irrational numbers are root 2. You can't express root 2 as a simplified fraction of integers, or pi, or Euler's number, so e, e to the power of something, pi to the power of something. These three are examples of irrational numbers. Okay, so we want to disprove this statement. We want to find a scenario where it's not true. There's a few different ways we can do this. Let's first look at the third, so root 2. You can have two thirds multiplied by one another to give a non third answer. So if those two thirds both contain root 2, so examples of that would be something like, let's say, root 2 and then 2 root 2, these are two numbers that are not equal. m cannot equal 2n, but when you multiply them together, the root 2 by, times by the root 2 would give you 2. So this would be 4 overall. So this is an example of two irrational numbers multiplying together to give you a rational number. So that disproves the statement by means of a counterexample. Another example could be with pi and e, you do the same kind of thing. So pi, if you have, let's say, pi multiplied by 5 over pi, both of these numbers are irrational. And when you multiply them together, you end up with just 5. The pi's cancel out. Or if you were to have something like e to the power of 3 multiplied by a third of e to the power of minus 3, let's say, this will just give you a third. The e to the power of 3 multiplied by the e to the power of minus 3 would just give you e to the power of 0, which is just 1, so that just becomes 1 over 3. So those are three examples. You don't need to give three different examples, you just need one, but I've just shown you a few different ways in which you can do this. Those are different counterexamples that disprove this statement. So just a brief conclusion afterwards, therefore the statement is incorrect. On to part b. Sketch the graph of y is equal to modulus of x plus 3. Okay, so let's start by just doing a quick sketch of y is equal to x. This is, this is pretty straightforward. Just looks like that. There's y is equal to x. So for modulus functions, how you sketch modulus functions, you with whatever line you have before, anything that dips below the x-axis, you reflect above. So y is equal to modulus of x would look like this. This is y is equal to modulus of x. The bit of the line y is equal to x that dipped below the x-axis, we reflected above the x-axis. Each half of this modulus function has an equation. So this part here has an equation. That's the same line as before, so that is just y is equal to x. And on the left-hand side, this line here would be y is equal to minus x. So the basic idea behind this is, with the reflected line, it's the same equation as the original line, but the right-hand side of the equation, you just times by minus 1. So in our case, the right-hand side of this original line, so this is the original line, the right-hand side of that is just x, you just times that by minus 1, the equation for what gets reflected above the x-axis is now y is equal to minus x, so minus this. So that's y is equal to modulus of x. And then the y is equal to modulus of x plus 3 just moves everything up three places. So I'll put that over here. We're just shifting everything up by three places. This is a translation of vector 0, 3. Translation of vector 0, 3. That would then just look like this. y is equal to modulus of x plus 3. This coordinate here, it was originally just 0, 0. Now it's shifted up to 0, 3. And we don't have to do this bit, but 
uh, it, just so you know how to get the equations for each of these lines, the right-hand side line, so this one over here, is the same as this, but just shifted up by three places. So it would have the same equation as this, but just plus three. That would be this here would be y is equal to x plus three, and this here would be y is equal to minus x plus three. Same kind of logic. It's just this line over here, y is equal to minus x, moved up three places, so plus three. That's b part one. b part two explain why the modulus of x plus 3 is greater than or equal to the modulus of x plus 3 for all real values of x. Okay, so the best way to do this is to get a sketch. We've already sketched the left-hand side. Modulus of x plus 3 is what we sketched in part 1. The modulus of x plus 3 is a different graph. Let's sketch that now. So let's first draw y is equal to x plus 3 without the modulus that would look something like this, where this is minus 3, this here is 3. So this is y is equal to x plus 3. And the modulus function would be the same thing, but again, everything beneath the x-axis is reflected above. So it would look something like this. This here would be minus 3, this would be 3. The equations of the two lines this on the right hand side would be y is equal to x plus 3 and same rule as before use the same equation y is equal to x plus 3 but just make the right hand side of that equation or get the right hand side of the equation and times it by minus 1 so it'll be y is equal to minus x minus 3 okay so what's the relevance of this let's draw let's draw that graph that we have here on top of this one let's put them on the same graph, so or same set of axes. So this graph here, this graph here, the y is equal to modulus of x plus 3, and the y is equal to modulus of x, which is what we have here, y is equal to modulus of x plus 3. Okay, I'll just do that below. So there's our axes. Here is y is equal to the modulus of x plus 3, and in blue is y is equal to the modulus of x plus 3. Okay, so the question is asking us to show that the modulus of x plus 3, which was the blue modulus function that I drew, so why is the blue modulus function bigger than modulus of x plus 3, which is the purple v-shaped graph? So why is blue bigger than purple? Or more specifically, why is it greater than or equal to purple? Well, we can see that from the graph. So if you look at the graph, for when for when x is greater than or equal to 0, then the modulus of x plus 3 is equal to the modulus of x plus 3. And for x is less than 0, actually I'll just go back a step, so just showing you this on the graph, when x is greater than or equal to 0, we're considering x is 0 and all positive values. We can look at the graph to see that the two lines, purple and blue overlap. So those two functions are equal to one another. For x is less than 0, so on the left hand side of the y-axis, negative x values, we see that for every single x value that we have, so if I pick a random x value, we go up to purple, it's beneath the blue line. So every single x value, purple is beneath blue, meaning the y-coordinate for the purple line is less than the y-coordinate for the blue line. And the y-coordinates are represented by, so we see from here that y is equal to modulus of x plus 3, y is equal to this. So if purple y is less than blue y for all x values, then this here must be less than this for all negative x values. So when x is less than 0, the modulus of x plus 3 is bigger than the modulus of x plus 3. So the statement modulus of x plus 3 is greater than or equal to modulus of x plus 3 is therefore true. Because for positive x values and when x is equal to 0, the two things are equal. And for negative x values, 
blue is bigger than purple. Both of these statements here satisfy this.